What it is, what it do, what's good? We back with another video. I got a few requests to talk about the magic man, so we're gonna break it down here in this video. As always, if you get any valuable information out of this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We almost about to crack that first 1,000, so let's keep rocking, man. I appreciate it. All right, so hopping straight into it. The Magic Mask tool is actually a color grading tool. Ironically enough, I never use it for color grading. I don't do much color grading. I mostly use it for actually rotoscoping or masking. Magic Mask is nothing new. They just, you know, improve it over time. But with DaVinci Resolve 18, they actually introduced the Object Mask, where you can actually select different objects other than a person. So you get the Object Mask, and you have the person mask and with the person mask you can select the person by drawing a single line down your subject by hitting this little toggle overlay in the davinci resolve neural system i think it's called will actually highlight your subject and turn them turn them red this is actually your reference point you can see the little blue dot here <laughs> from there you just have to hit the track back and forward and it will actually track your subject and from my understanding your results that you get depend on your computer and also your clip. Say for instance, my computer only has like 16 gigs of RAM, so sometimes it's a little wonky. I'm not sure how much DaVinci feeds off the RAM in order to perform the Magic Mask, but I know my computer doesn't have much RAM. And you can see right here, it actually lost track of the cell phone, which is an object, so it's kind of understandable why it lost the track, but also the fact that her hands are going in and out of the frame because the camera's moving. It loses a little bit of a track too. In my experience, in order to get good results, you want a clip that has clear contrast between the main subject and the background. This clip here is a pretty decent example. You can see here she's clearly defined from the background because the, the colors are not so similar. So you have this light background with her hair is dark, and then you have the darker tone of the jacket, which is more like a tan color. So it clearly separates the two. Now, I've tried the Magic Mags on this clip. This is from Kendrick Lamar's new, uh, one of his newest videos. And when you track, it's hit the track right quick. And this video knows that the line actually shoots off over here. That's mostly because the, the top part of this video is kind of dark. And of course, his hair is dark. So sometimes they lose a little bit of the track. But if you scroll through, you see it holds pretty well. And it kind of, it really can't keep up with his hair because it's like a little loose string. Strings, I mean. But the net with his shirt being white and the background being a dark reddish color, it clearly holds on to the, the at least the torso part of it. And with the magic mask for the person mask, in a way, you can actually select different features. So you go to features and drop down, you can select just the hair. Draw a line, you'll select the hair. Do uh well he torso was supposed his skin is not exposed here, so you won't use that one. You're gonna use clothing top. And it'll select it. It's, you kind of got to go through and actually refine it. Now, if you hit Alt on the keyboard, you'll notice the little plus sign will turn into a minus sign. Then you can go through. You can highlight the parts that you want to cut out. Kind of like Photoshop. And then you want to track again. Now, now that I have so many different strokes, it's kind of going wonky. In my experience too, the more strokes you put, sometimes the more wonky it gets. Now, if you get a good track, you of course, you'll get the green check mark. If it doesn't get a good track, you'll see the part that it did track, but you won't get a good check, you won't get a green check mark showing that it's tracked perfectly. You can also increase the quality of your tracking by selecting better. It's a little more taxing on the computer. And then on the Smart Refine, I, I would recommend drop it down at least a little bit and just highlight it and drop it down made about 40 or so basically what they do is kind of like dropping down the tolerance therefore it won't be searching too far outside of your subject for the subject itself and it usually give you a better track but this for this tutorial i'm just going to stick with faster for right now you can also get a better visual of your tracking by hitting the highlights and it'll actually cut out your background and you'll see more or less what it looks like i say cut out the phone because the phone is actually a object but it makes sense as to why it cut it out but with it also being so entangled with the hands, it kind of glitches out the uh, the mask a little bit, especially with our hands dropping out of frame. Now you can hit Alt S in the secondary node. You can actually go to Person Tracker, I mean, uh, Object Tracker, and select the phone. And toggle your mask on. And you see you got your mask. 
I mean, you don't you don't have to be at the first frame or anything like that in order to use a mask. Whatever you selected it, that's gonna be the reference point. So basically, going you basically want to try to pick a part of the frame where your subject is in the utmost center and get the most clearest view of your subject. <clears throat> By doing so, they said it's a reference point for when it tracks back and forward. You can see that it's got a pretty good track, especially since the subject is not moving as much at all. And the object mask, in my experience, works better than the magic mask. Like you can actually use the object mask on a person if you want to, but it's a little wonky as far as if you want to render out a background. So if you feed this into this, you then get both tracks. And now you got the phone track and her hand, like her hand's still a little wonky. You can go back to the first node and let's see, let's drop, let's go to about right here and put a mark. Hopefully that will blend in the rest of it. Then you want to track again. So you'll have two strokes. And you notice there it didn't get a it didn't get a complete track due to the fact that like I said our hands keep dropping in and out of frame. So if at all possible, you want to try to keep your subject in frame. And say for instance, you want to render out this background, which is mainly what I use the magic mask for. You want to hit right click, hit alpha point. Drop the take the blue line here and connect it here. You want to cut off the mask overlay and then we'll actually oh, cut off highlight as well. They give you a black background. I'm gonna go down here to radius, bring it up, and they'll kind of basically soften the mask. You got radius and you also got blur radius. And play with, you play with these different settings. There's no definitive setting, it's just something you kind of mess around with to try to clean up the mask a little bit. Now you can see here you have a rotoscope out mass. Gotta give it a little second to render. Now if you move a clip around, like I said, this is very taxing on the computer. So if you move the clip around and stuff, you would lose the mass. What I recommend is right clicking and go into render in place. On the quick time, we're gonna change the codex from DNHD to DNHR. Then type, I'm gonna go to DNHR HQ. And use these settings here to hit render. Of course, it's gonna ask you for a location to render at. Uh, I'm gonna create a new folder. Now, once it's rendered out, you see right now you got the color background. So if you hit the disable, once it's rendered out, it keeps the alpha background. Like I said, if you move it over here, that actually makes the clip a lot easier to work with without having to constantly have to wait for it to re-render and everything. If you find yourself wanting to redo the mask or something like that, you can also right click, decompose to original. Now this option is only available within the initial project. So say for instance, if you, if you do get mask and you render out the clip and then you save your project, close down DaVinci Resolve, you know, go on something else, drink a cup of coffee or something like that, come back. And when you reopen the project, this option to decompose to original won't be available anymore because it's not, at that point it's completely, I guess you call this like a hard save is it, you can't go back to the original. It wasn't, it won't recognize the original. So decompose the original, then make it back to a clip, uh, the original clip. You can go back to the color page. You can mess around with the nose. If you disconnect the alpha line, alpha point, and say for instance, you just want to use it strictly for color grading. When you mess with the color, it only would affect what's in the mask. Which is actually what the actual purpose of this tool is, but I usually use it for rotoscoping. It's the closest thing to the rotoscoping tool from After Effects. Like it doesn't always give you the best results. So a lot of time I still go into Fusion and just rotoscope it manually, which I do have a video about on the channel. This is before. And after I basically just cut up the saturation, drop the gang, drop the lift a little bit, and a little bit of the gang, I and mean the gamma, not much, but she looks more, looks more lively now. But that's going to do it for this video. If you have any more questions, be sure to hit me up on my Discord page or any of my social medias. All the links will be in the description down below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you'll know anytime I upload a new video. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.